Hi friends, welcome home. I hope you're blessed and doing well because I'm doing great. Welcome back to the garden. You know, we have some work to do here in the garden today. And today I'm going to share with you my lucky seven crops to grow. And if you grow these, well, you'll eat food for life. So what are those lucky seven crops to grow? I'm gonna show you. The very first one I do consider a biannual plant. Um, and biannuals are great to add to your garden. I have been growing celery in my garden every single year since I started a garden. And every single year I have celery just available for me. I don't usually pull the whole plant up and take off the stalks and this and that. I usually just leave it in the ground. And what will happen is it will have a two-year growing life cycle. Biannuals have a two-year life cycle. They produce their leaves and roots and stems and all of that during their first year. The second year, they'll still grow. If they're a leafy green, they'll still grow their leaves. But the second year, they'll put on seeds. They'll set seed. And what will generally happen if you let that plant go to seed, you can harvest the seed and plant it. But I just let the plant naturally drop its own seeds and I will get a plant the next growing season. So here I have a celery plant that's growing. This is a really small one right now that has still some growing to do. But as you can see, it has really beautiful stems and it is packed with flavor. Celery grown out of your garden tastes totally different than that watered down kind of washed out celery you get in the grocery store. Sorry, grocery store, but this celery that's grown in your garden has a strong, robust, pungent taste. It is absolutely delicious. And if you use too much of it, oh my goodness, it will be overpowering. So you have to make sure you're using it in the right amounts. But celery in the garden tastes really delicious and it's really, really good. Here's my celery. This is a smaller stem and you can actually use the leaves, the leaves, the little leaves here have totally de just delicious flavor so don't think that you can't some people cut that cut the leaves off of their celery and toss it I'm like what are you doing no oh oh it's so strong oh my gosh guys this is this tastes totally different this is just this little bitty stem alone it is overpowering a, a stalk out of the grocery store mm. Oh, good, good, good Lord, good Lord. And that leaves on this, you guys, it's so strong. I cannot even describe the immense explosion <laughs> that's taking place in my mouth right now. Let's go to the next one. All right, so we're going to go on down here to the other part of the garden where I have some onions growing and I'm working on another one of my garden beds. Well, I'm sure you probably heard about this one. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous artichoke plant. So here we have an artichoke. It is doing really, really good. So far, so good. I planted several artichokes in here. Now, artichokes can be a little tough to grow um, in my area, for me anyway, only because we have the cold weather and artichokes cannot handle cold temps celery can handle freezing temperatures so that's why it's really good to just keep some of, of the celery in your garden and let it grow because it can handle the really cold temps these um, plants here they are not that cold tolerant even though it's cold hardy um, a really really dip in temp can kill this plant so what I did when we hit the 20s we got to down to 21 degrees here in Georgia zone 8a um, haven't had those temps in a very long time but what I did was when this plant was um, growing over the winter I had I had this plant covered with hay and I completely covered it over it just looked like a giant mound and you couldn't even tell what was underneath this so protect your artichoke and you should do just fine um, it does like um, some fertilizing during the growing season um, so just keep it watered don't let it dry out even though it's really drought tolerant it's a really tough plant 
but it does it definitely doesn't like to just completely just be so dry that it's choking it out and you can always tell when the leaves are turning brown as you can see the plant is definitely healthy it's doing good and hopefully this season we're gonna have us some artichokes all right we're gonna move over to the other side of the garden here and go up to the herb bed now you definitely need to plant you some herbs because herbs most of the herbs are perennial there are some annual herbs but the perennial herbs you definitely should grow so we're not going to go over all of those we'll do that another time but i'm going to show you this one here because this is a must grow in your garden actually i'll show you both plants um which both varieties i'm actually digging up one of them to move it and um sowing some more seeds to the green sorrel here so let's just go over here real quick my chickens are out enjoying life i have my broccoli covered that's why they're able to come out here and um do some free ranging all right let's take a look at the sorrel here hey you want some sorrel too you better leave my sorrel alone all right guys so this is sorrel and i actually dug it up so that's why it's out of the ground and um my wyadot my beautiful chicken here looks like she wants to try to check it out and here comes pepper she wants a little nibble of it too but sorrel is really easy to grow comes back year after year after year this plant has only gone to seed one time so far and the mother plant died off and dropped seeds so um, this is a really really good plant to grow as well delicious lemony type of flavor if you all watched this, my, if you all have been watching my channel you know i love sorrel i love sorrel because it is so good it has a lemony flavor to it and i like to eat it in my salads as a salad green it's really really good she's so rude she just she kicking up those wood chips in my face mmm you guys it's it's just so good sorrel tastes so good i'm gonna get another leaf that lemon that lemony flavor that it has it is so so tasty i love it this one tastes different than the other variety over there you have a french variety and then you have the green mm. it's so good you got to grow you some sorrel okay add that on your list mm. let's go over here all right so this is the other variety over here in my herb garden all right so over here in my herb garden here my rosemary is awesome it needs to be cut back some more but it's flowering it has flowers all over it this is the most that it's ever flowered before it's gorgeous but down here we have tons of other herbs but this one here is another sorrel variety um this one right here is absolutely delicious too i love this one and i always say that anytime you get a plant that has this type of veining that means something that it's really really good for cleansing and detoxing the blood so you make sure you get you some sorrel and add it to your body really good for heart health and things like that nature has its own way of telling you what it can be used for okay so Hey, Chicky Baby. See the Chicky Baby over here? <laughs> Let's give it a try. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, this variety here, this one, to me, mm, it tastes really good too. Not as lemony or has that lemon zesty flavor, as pungent as the green. But this one, this one has more of that salad green type of flavor to it which I really enjoy in my salads. So this particular variety will come back every single year. You don't have to worry about it. Super cold tolerant, can take really cold temperatures um, and it will die back to the ground and then it will revive itself in the spring like it's doing right here. Let's take a look at it. So here it is right here. It is go coming back up nice and strong and looking absolutely gorgeous. I absolutely love it and oh you want some you want some wow this is why 
I never have proper pathways because yeah, I need rocks in here because this isn't gonna work. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go over here to the raised bed. Now, I need to be working on these beds because they are in desperate need of repair. However, they're still holding on strong, so we're gonna keep using them, guys. All right, so I'm over here at my raised bed here and um, getting ready to plant out some sweet potatoes. We're gonna go over that in just a minute. But these right here, this bed is my strawberry bed that I need to clear out because there are weeds in here. Um, but the chickens, the chickens actually love these little, these little greens here. They'll eat them. You want some, girl? Um, but I do have to do some weeding in this bed, but nevertheless, strawberries are perennial. They will come back year after year for you. They are very cold tolerant and can take really cold temperatures and lots of water. So you can't really waterlog them once they get established, okay? Um, so my strawberries have already started flowering in this bed and they're sending off new shoots, which is amazing they grew up and over the top of this bed last season and touched the ground and when they do that and they send out their runners they will root themselves into the ground and you will have a new plant you will have a new strawberry plant so you can get tons and tons and tons of strawberry plants that way by using the runners okay let me show you how they are developing in here the chickens had gotten in here a little bit and scratched out some of my strawberry plants a little bit but for the most part no damage done they're good all right so as you can see this bed needs some help However, I kind of let these things stay in. I kind of let these things stay in during the winter as kind of like a covering over the strawberries. And then they easily, easily, easily can be pulled out. You just have to be careful not to pull out the strawberries, of course. But once you kind of pull them out and get all these other things out, I kind of let that stay in like it's mulch. And just pull gently around them making sure that you're not pulling out your plant and as you can see i've already started clearing out this section here and i just you know i just move slowly and gently and make sure i'm not pulling out my strawberry plant but you can definitely tell the strawberry from the weeds you don't want those look how big and healthy these strawberry plants are they're all around and they've already started putting on um, blooms of course we got the random dandelion that never fails and gets in here however if you can see how it jumped out of the bed and it sits it runners out they probably even came through the cracks of the bed but right here we have more strawberries that are on the ground so I have to get them up here are some more because they are actually run all along the grass and you'll have to kind of chase them down and get all of your strawberry plants but they are actually everywhere all in here all of these are strawberries all right guys here we go so i'm going to show you all two more that we can add to the lucky seven list all right let me show you two more that we're going to add to the lucky seven list okay and you'll want to add them to your garden as soon as possible so we have watercress watercress is a perennial green it is a powerhouse when it comes to nutrition if you are looking for a cleanser, a detoxer, fire, um, an overall nutrient dense green, this is the one. I have eaten this. It's very, very strong, which I love. <laughs> so I take it and I take the leaves and I might sprinkle a little bit in my salad or maybe smoothie or maybe juice it or even put it in wraps. You can find ways to eat it. I like to eat it raw when possible because it is at its most potent form or juicing it is really, really good. So grow you some watercress. It is definitely one to add to the garden. So I'll be sowing some seeds for watercress this season and adding it to the garden. 
the other one we can um, add is collards so there are several different types of collard varieties and there are several i grow in this garden but morris head and collard georgia collard collard greens are considered a biannual and another wonderful wonderful nutrient dense vegetable to grow in your garden what it will do is it will grow all season long heat tolerant drought tolerant um it's it's really tough on the bug the bugs can chew it and eat it and everything and it'll still survive i love collards for that reason it can take frost and freezes and snow and ice and it will just spring back for you it will overwinter a whole growing season grow all these beautiful leaves and then during its second life cycle second year it will grow green beautiful leaves again for you and then it will set seed so that is what these beautiful collard greens here are doing now so as you can see still producing wonderful greens these are edible okay they're edible greens these there's nothing wrong with these greens you saw the chickens they were tearing them up so these beautiful flowers i love 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 these flowers okay <laughs> i love them the, these are going to be the seed pods that will develop on the plant here and you can harvest these seeds and sow them again so today i will be sowing collard greens i'm just going to be sowing collard greens all season long you'll probably hear me say that a zillion times because i am i want a huge crop of greens they're gorgeous they are absolutely fantastic so they grow all this green leaf um leafy greens during the second growing season and then they'll send up these beautiful um, um seed pot flowering shoots here and the plant will go to seed and you will have another crop for the next growing season what i also like about collards is that they um actually grow pretty quickly they don't grow like super super slow so you can have a nice crop in about 75 days so i love that about um, collard greens the other one that you can grow that's growing in my little cup here are the tree collard now this is a cutting okay and um my chickens unfortunately got to my tree collards last season and devoured them so i have to be very very cautious they can i cannot put them in there um, at this size they have to be a lot bigger and tougher like these greens here in order to be able to handle the chickens because they will eat this and just desecrate this poor little plant and that's what happened last season i had purple variety and i also had a green variety and um they're gone however i was able to get a cutting from my mother because i did give her some of the tree collards as well thank goodness because now i can regrow me um some tree collards which tree collards are a perennial collard green to grow in your garden all right so another really good one to add to your garden guys is rhubarb i have a rhubarb plant over there that's um, overwintering it hasn't really started coming up yet so i bought another one because i only have one plant and i figure maybe for a family of four maybe we should have at least one plant or two so i decided to grab another one this year and i have to plant this one in the ground but rhubarb is a perennial and i just love it those pink stems and stalks are gorgeous um really cold tolerant it does die back in the winter time so it, mine has died back and then it'll start sending off shoots and it'll be back and you will be able to have you some beautiful rhubarb pie okay so the next one i know i got one more for you one more for you we got one more and then you'll be done all right guys so our final one for the lucky seven that you should grow in your garden is asparagus and down here let's see if we can get down here so we can see it in this other raised bed that i have down here down here as you can see so as you can see the asparagus is starting to send off shoots um earlier in the season i had shoots down here at the bottom but this particular plant is just getting this particular plant is just getting established and just getting started but it's actually 
gorgeous. That is a gorgeous asparagus spear. So asparagus is a perennial and it had some more shoots down here, but it's growing in a bed of onions only because it's a starter plant. And this season I will be adding to this bed and nothing else will grow in this bed but asparagus so i have several other plants to add in here and i will definitely be expanding um, the garden of this raised bed full of asparagus asparagus is an amazing plant to grow it's absolutely delicious so nutritious i love it i love it sauteed with a little garlic butter mm, and a little salt and pepper so it is absolutely good, delicious all right so we have lucky seven and there are so many more we'll go over some more and i will be reminding you to see if you have added any of these in your garden and if you have let me know in the comment section down below i would love to know what perennials or even biannuals do you grow in your garden and which ones have you found to be helpful in your garden as well these chickens i tell you they were getting in my onion bed and digging up my onions and I'm gonna tell you that is a surefire way to get yourself in trouble okay <laughs>